We just played the hearing things or the, the say what game. Basically, you put these noise canceling earphones on, I read a phrase to a person, and then they turn to the next person and they say what they heard, and then the other person tries to read the lips, but there's music playing, there's commotion in some, and some you had to hold your ears, and you couldn't hear, you tried to make out what the person in front of you was saying. A lot of times, that's what it's like when we try to hear God. Some of us are straining to hear, but we can't. Some of us, our hearing is drowned out by commotion of others, the world, outside influences, and we can't hear. Some of us just don't know how to hear, and so we can't. I want to read to you from Exodus chapter 3. Coach, Exodus chapter 3 says this, Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. So one day, this guy, Moses, he's out in the farm taking care of the animals. Everyone make a goat noise. That's a good goat. Everyone make a goat noise. Meh, meh. He's out taking care of the farm animals, right? I think that was a real goat. That's a real goat. And while he's taking care of these animals, he sees this bush. And the bush was on fire, but the bush wasn't being consumed. It was just, it was just there on fire. And out of that fire comes a voice. It says Moses. And Moses is like, what? And it was God. And Moses begins to have this conversation with God. And God talked to Moses. And Moses heard God. That's crazy. Has this ever happened to anyone here? Nobody. Me neither. But a lot of people think that this is how God has to show up in order for them to hear from him. They want some bright light to appear in their bedroom and start speaking to them, or they expect some loud voice to come from the sky. And it's not that God can't do these things. God can do anything. But if God doesn't do them, then how do you hear from him? How can you hear God? Tonight, we're going to talk to you about the hows of hearing. How do you hear from God? Because God does speak to us. He may not show up in the form of a burning bush, but he does speak to us. You just have to know how to hear him. And we've tried to make this as easy as possible. The first way you hear God, coach, it's not not through coach, but it's coach slide. Holy Spirit. Everyone say Holy Spirit. The first how in the house to hear God is Holy Spirit. Jesus says, coach, next slide. In John 14, 26, the helper, the Holy Spirit, will teach you things. He'll help you remember things. He'll guide you. He'll counsel you. He'll comfort you. But how can you hear him? It's kind of like this. It's kind of like this. You know that little voice in your head that tells you what to do and what not to do? That thing we call a a conscience? Everyone say conscience. The Holy Spirit is kind of like that little voice. So when you hear that little voice tell you to do something or say something or go somewhere— Take what that little voice says and line it up with God's word and God's character. If what that little voice tells you to do produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, that's most likely God speaking to you. If that little voice is telling you to do bad things, mean things, or hurtful things, don't listen to it. That's not from God. Another way to describe the Holy Spirit and how he speaks through you is through heaviness. Everyone say heaviness. Heaviness or promptings. It's like this. Who loves Christmas? Who is seriously, right? Especially like the night before. You know that feeling you get inside when Christmas is coming? Especially the night before, that excitement, that restlessness, that, oh my gosh, I can't sleep because Christmas is tomorrow and I'm going to get stuff. Or you ever have a test 
or a project due that you weren't prepared for and you, you weren't ready because you didn't do your homework and you really can't do anything else. You especially can't sleep because it's constantly on your mind like you keep thinking about it over and over and over. That's kind of how it is with the Holy Spirit, that feeling of heaviness, this constant thinking of a particular place or person or thing. It's kind of like carrying a heavy backpack. You just feel something there and you can't rest until you do what he's telling you to do. Check this out. True story. I was at this church one time. I slept over by my parents' house and we went to this church. I'd never been to this church, but I went there and I sat and they were playing this worship song and I could tell like there was this homeless dude behind me and he smelled like that's not a joke, but like he smelled. I could, I could smell him from behind me and um, throughout the whole service, like I feel this heaviness where the Holy Spirit was telling me, hey, give this guy some money. And I'm like, I'm like, what? I don't even, I don't, I don't, I don't even like have money to give this guy, but it was just this heaviness, just give this guy money, give this money. I'm like, I can't, I don't want to. So I'm wrestling the whole service with whether or not I should give this guy money. Service ends and I'm finally like, okay, I'll give him money. I turn around and he's gone. So I'm like, well, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to give him money. So I leave, I get in my car and I, I start to leave. And then true story. I look at the clock, 11, 11. I'm like, I got to go back. I cannot drive any further from this house, from this church until I go back and see this guy. So I turn around and I go back in the church and now I'm walking around this church and they had a little, like a little food gathering that day. So I'm walking around looking for this homeless dude. And I go up to this homeless dude and I'm like, Hey, uh, God wants me to give you money. And I gave him like 20 bucks and he's like, you just did this the other day at McDonald's. And I'm like, I've never seen you before in my life. I don't even come to this church. How, how did I, how, how did, how do you think I, he's like, it was you. You gave me money the other day at McDonald's. I was like, I've never seen you before. So here God's been providing this dude with money and food the whole time. But had I not listened or followed that heaviness, that prompting, that Holy Spirit, I would have missed out on that blessing. And this is um, a way you hear from God, the Holy Spirit, this heaviness, this prompting. Another way to hear from God, coach, is others. Everyone say others. 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 And by others, I mean pastors, parents, people, both Christian and non. Movies, songs, books. I lump them all into one, and that is others. In the Old Testament of the Bible, God is constantly using prophets who are people to speak to God's people. But we can't just take what everyone says as being from God because some people will just tell you what they want to tell you in their own. Well, I just feel, I feel like the Lord wants me to tell you this. No, you don't. You just want to say that and you're using God's name as if he wants you to tell. No, you don't. So just like with the heaviness, the little voice in your head, you got to take what other people say, line it up with the word of God, line it up with God's character. Everyone say, give us an example. Everyone say, give us an example, because you have no idea what I'm talking about. Give us an example. Give us an example, everyone. Thank you, Mariah. Give us an example. One time I'm driving in my car. True story. True story. Listen, I love to share true stories, okay? I, I love this Bible, and I love to preach out of it, but true, real, personal life stories like, I'm not, I don't make this up. One time I'm driving in my car and this little voice in my head tells me, yo, call Matthew. Matthew's my best friend. Call Matthew, tell him you love him and tell him that you're thankful for him. And I'm like, I don't do that. Like, I don't randomly, randomly just call people and tell them stuff. But it was just this, this heaviness, this heaviness. So I took what that word said. I lined it up with God's word and God's character in a match. But at the same time, it didn't make sense because I don't randomly do that. But the heaviness was there and I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I called him. And I told him what I felt led to say. It turns out at the same time, Matthew was so depressed at that time. And he's praying and asking God for a word of encouragement. Here, God puts this word of encouragement on my heart. And I call him and Matthew's prayer was answered. And he was lifted up out of his depression because God had spoke to him through me. Do you realize you could be, you could be an answer to someone's prayer? You could be at a shopping mall or Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or even school. And you feel this prompting to speak to someone, to say something to someone. Follow it. Follow it and obey it because that person might be praying at the same time, God, speak to me. Please tell me you love me. Do something. Give me a sign. Okay, I'm going to give you a sign. I'm going to use my, my, my Christian, my child to speak to you. Are you going to obey or are you just going just gonna to brush it off? 
We said last week, a lot of people want to experience God. A lot of people leave the church because they don't experience God. Yet, when God actually puts something on their heart, they don't do it. Would that make sense why you're not experiencing God? Because you're not following his promptings. Does that make sense? It makes sense. You could be the answer to someone's prayer. And that's the kind of way you know that you're hearing from God. It could, if you hear something at the perfect time. I mentioned music and movies and books as form of others. Let me give you another example, a real life story. One time I'm going through this real traumatic thing and I need a word from God. I needed a major, I needed to make a major life decision. So I'm praying, I'm saying, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do regarding this situation? And there was this song on the radio at the time, it's Mandisa, it's Overcomer, right? You probably heard it. You're an overcomer, right? They played it out so much when it first came out, it was annoying and I didn't like it. Didn't like it. Anytime it came off, I was like, oh gosh, seriously, again? So one day I wake up and um, I'm about to go to church and I turn on the radio and the first words to come out of, this, out of the radio were, stay in the fight till the final round. You're not going under because God is holding you right now. And I heard the song a million times before, so I was just like, whatever, kind of brushed it off. I go to church and I go into this office to send out some emails after church and I sit down and I push play on the radio and the very first words to come out of the radio were, stay in the fight till the final round. You're not going under because God is holding you right now. So now my wheels are kind of turning. I'm like, hey, that's, that's kind of weird. Two times in the same day, the first words that come out are the first words as soon as I push play. Hmm, that's kind of, my wheels are turning, but I still, I brush it off. So I go home later, the same day, 1030 at night. I'm sitting on my couch and I'm like, man, you know what? It'd be really cool if I went upstairs and I press play on the radio and then this song comes on. Ah, there's no way that's going to do that. There's no way it's impossible, but it would be cool if I did. So I go back and forth. 10 minutes, I'm on my couch arguing with myself of how it could happen, how it couldn't happen, this and that and the other. So I go upstairs, push play on the radio. Very first words that come out of, stay in the fight till the final round, you're not going under, God is holding you right now. Very first words that come out. Then I get a random text message, but there's no such thing as random, God is sovereign in control of everything. Random text message from a dude who never texted me, praise the Lord. Do you see that? Three times in the same day, I heard the same verse at the very first verse to come out of the radio. That's how God speaks to you, these random things, this perfection. I tried to recreate that. You can't recreate that. That is how God can speak to you through music, him being absolutely sovereign, perfect, detailed. So let's say you're praying for whatever. It could be anything. And then throughout the, <clears throat> and then throughout the day or the week, you keep hearing the same song. And there's a line in that song that sticks out and it relates to what you prayed or you watch a movie that relates to what you prayed or you read something that relates to what you prayed or you see a license plate or a set of numbers or a Bible verse and you're like, oh my gosh, that's so weird. I was just praying about this specific thing. This seems like an answer to my prayer. It most likely is. Don't ignore it. This repeated hearing or seeing of the same thing over and over may be be God speaking to you. You can hear God through others. Another true story. I was going through another major life decision, and I prayed, and I said, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I'm, I'm really scared at this point, right? I'm scared because I had to make a terrifying life-altering decision, and I go to sleep, and I'm awoken out of my sleep, dead sleep, but I'm awoken with like this whisper in my head. It was like audible, but not really audible, but it woke me up out of a deep sleep. And it said, the fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is saved, Proverbs 29, 25. And I'm like, never heard that verse before. Don't even know what, the, don't even know what that is. So I'm searching this verse in all different, all different translations, trying to figure out what this thing means. But I brush it off and I go to sleep and I'm awoken again out of a deep sleep. Same thing. I look at the clock, 3.33. Weird, but it happened. Same thing, and I'm like, oh my God, I think God's trying to speak to me. Same day, I go to this Bible study. Now, something, this heaviness, this prompting, told me a week prior that I needed to be present during this particular speaker's message because he would have something for me. In this speaker's message, he referenced Proverbs 29, 25. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Three times in the same day, I heard the same verse, and that was exactly what I was praying for, guidance. And what God was telling me to do is exactly what I needed to do. This repetition of things, that's how you know that God is speaking to you. Next slide, true story. Watch this. One time I felt like um, I needed to be baptized. So I prayed and I said, God, give me a set of numbers in the morning. Whatever set of numbers is in the morning, that's the day I'll get baptized. I was a baby Christian, so I still really didn't even know how to pray or what to pray, but I asked God for a sign. I said, give me a set of numbers. In the morning, he sent me this verse right here, Romans 12, 1. 
coincidentally, two months before 12-1 was October. That's when I prayed this, 12-1 just so happened to be a Sunday. So I got baptized December 1st, 2013, which was a Sunday. Do you think the odds, the probability of that particular verse coming from my particular prayer the very day, and it just so happened to be a Sunday? Next, tr another true story. I lost my townhome. My townhome went into foreclosure. Now, I call my one friend Sheol. Sheol is the land of the dead. It's not a good name to call someone, but it's kind of a joke that we have between each other, okay? I lose my townhome. No, townhome people call me, say, hey, you got two weeks to be out of your house. So I got two weeks to be out of my house. I'm going to be homeless. So I'm praying, God, I got nowhere to go. I got nowhere to go. Where am I going to live, right? Where am I going to live? The same day I pray that prayer, this dude, his name's Alex, he calls me from Florida. He says, hey, I'm going to be in Florida for a while. Would you be willing to live in my condo while I'm down here? And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. I'm like, who told you? He's like, who told me what? I'm like, how do you know? How do I know what? I'm like, dude, I have to be out of my house in two weeks, and you just so happened to call me at this day when I prayed this prayer and asked me if I wanted to live in your condo? Not a coincidence. It's providence, God incidents. So I'm able to hear God. So here, why this verse is up there. I'm praying, God, do you want me to live here? Because that's how stupid I am, right? That's how stupid we all can be. God provides something and we ask him if it's really from him. So God, do you really, hey God, if you really want me to move in his condo, can you send me a Bible verse in the morning and kind of like direct me? I get this in the, in, in the morning, in Shoal. I call my friend Alex Shoal, in Shoal, where you are going, where you are going, you're going to live in his condo. That's, that's, I, I, heard from God. And this is another way. A third way you can hear from God is through the word. Everyone say through the word. Through the word. Now, some people will say that the Bible is written by humans, and therefore it's tainted, or it's not really the word of God, but rather human opinions or ideology. Let me get one volunteer. One volunteer. One high schooler. Come on up here. Luis, come on. Come on. No, you already raised your hand, and we're on a time limit? Come on up here. You're just going to say three words. You're just going to say three words. Come on up here. Don't be scared. Everyone give it up for Luis. Give it up for Luis. Round of applause. Stay right here. Yeah, this is what you're going to say. This is what you're going to say. Every part of scripture is God breathed. What? Every, every part of scripture is God breathed. What? Every part, every part of, scripture of scripture is God breathed. Is God breathe? Amen. Amen. Give it up for him. Give it up. That was easy, right? Every part of scripture is God breathed, God ordained, God orchestrated. Now, he just got up here and said that. Who did you hear from? You heard from Luis? He said every part of scripture is God breathed. You couldn't hear anything because you need to learn how to hear God. Just kidding. You heard from Luis or you heard from me? Who was telling Luis what to say? I was. You heard from Luis, but you heard from me. Same thing with the Bible. You hear from people, people write this thing, but it's inspired by God. Did people write the Bible? Yes. Did God write the Bible? Yes. Every part of scripture is God breathed. You just saw a perfect illustration of that real life. And I don't know what better way to hear from God than God's word himself. That's why it's so important to read your Bible. This is God's word, the one and only God, the creator God. And you can hear from God in this book because it's living and active and powerful. Coach, slide, check this out. This is a conviction for everyone. I found this. Next one, coach. This is a true story right here. The Old Testament, if you were a normal reader, it would take you 13 hours, 46 minutes to read the Torah, 16 hours, 41 minutes to read the historical books, 9 hours to read the writings, 15 hours, 35 minutes to read the prophets. Next slide, coach. If you were to read the New Testament, it would take you 10 hours and 14 minutes to read the gospel and Acts, and it would take you 7 hours and 30 minutes to read the epistles and Revelation. Next slide, coach. If you were to want to read the whole Bible, if you read 6 minutes a day, it'd take you 2 years. 12 minutes a day, it'd take you 1 year. 25 minutes a day, you could read the entire Bible in 6 months. 50 minutes a day, 3 months, 2 hours, 29 minutes in 1 month. On average, American users spend 2 hours and 3 minutes on social media. On average, us users in the U.S. spend four hours watching videos. Next slide, coach. This means the average American can complete the Bible every month if they replace social media or a video intake with Scripture. But not everyone does that, right? Everyone wants to hear, hear from God, but no one wants to open a book and hear from God. 
So you can hear from God through the Holy Spirit, that little voice, that heaviness, those urges or promptings. You can hear from God through others, people, songs, movies. You can hear from God through his word. And lastly, you can hear from God through situations. Everyone say situations. Situations, life circumstances. There's a story in the Bible of this guy named Balaam in Numbers. And he was going on a path that God didn't want him to go on. So while he was on this path, God put an angel with a sword in the way. And the donkey that Balaam was riding on saw the angel and turned off the path. Balaam got mad, hit the donkey, got back on the path, and kept going. Sometime later, as the path got narrower, is it narrower or more narrow? As it got more narrower, narrower, God put an angel with a sword in the path. The donkey saw it, tried to turn away, and hit the wall because the path was narrow. Balaam got mad, hit the donkey, got back on the path, and kept going. Now, the path was even more narrow. There was nowhere to turn. So when God again put an angel with a sword in the way, the donkey just laid down because there was no return. Balaam, of course, got mad, hit the donkey again, and God made the donkey talk. Now, donkey's like, why are you hitting me, dude? I'm your donkey. And Balaam's like, you're making me look like an idiot. Then God let Balaam see the angel with a sword standing in the way, and he's like, oh my God. And the angel told him he was on a path that God didn't want to be on. Now, there's some pretty cool videos out there of what it looks like animals talking like a dog, like, roo, 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 like he says, I love you, or like a parrot, I love you. You know what I mean? But uh, animals don't talk. I don't want us to get so caught up in God making the animal talk that we lose sight of the situation or circumstance that Balaam was on with God making the path more narrow and more narrow. It's like this. Let's say you're going to go rob a bank and you're like, God, I'm going to go rob this bank because I want to give money to church. And uh, while you're on the way to rob the bank, your car breaks down. And then while you're on the way to rob the bank, you break an ankle. And then on your way to rob the bank, like you drop your gun. And then when you're on the way to the bank, like There's a whole roadblock that's blocked. God's probably telling you he doesn't want you to rob a bank because those situations and circumstances in life that God can speak through. On a flip side, if there's an open door for you and you're praying, walk through it because God could very well be opening that door and answering your prayer because you can hear God through life's circumstances. So you can hear God through, coach, last slide. These are the hows to hearing, hows to hearing God, Holy Spirit, others, word, situations. Listen, I want to teach you guys how to hear God and how to see God. The reason that I taught these last two messages these last two weeks is because I know some of you are going through stuff, okay? Painful, hurtful things in life. And if you have the ability to see and hear God through that stuff, you can elevate above it. And those things, that pain, that suffering, that that stuff that you're in can be the most joyous time that you're in if you have the ability to see and hear God. But you just have to practice what we're teaching. You can't just hear the message and leave. I know this firsthand because the things that I have gone through and I learned this stuff and the stuff that I was going through seemed like nothing because I was able to see and hear God in that stuff. That's why I'm teaching you guys this stuff. Whether or not you want to listen, I don't know. But this is, I mean, aside from hearing and seeing God is absolutely the coolest thing ever in the world because there's nothing that compares to it, the stuff that you guys are going through, if you're able to apply this to your life, phew, You'd be one of those crazy, radical, on-fire Christians. So let's pray. Let's close in prayer. God, open their ears so that they hear you. Open their hearts. Open their minds. Open their eyes that they see you. Draw them closer to you, to your Son. Sanctify them, conform them, convict them. In Jesus' name, God, cause them, set a fire. Set a fire that they become so radically saved and in love and pursuing after you that nothing else matters in this world but you and others see and want you. Help them to remember this and to apply it, that they hear you. Deafen them to the things of this world, that they don't hear the lies of the enemy and the evil one and blind them to the things of the world, that they don't see the things that this world has to offer, which absolutely leads to death. God, breathe life into them. Breathe life into them. Everything we praise in Christ's name. Amen and amen.